So Fareed Zakaria of CNN spoke with Jon Stewart. And anytime I see an interview with Jon Stewart, I really am inclined to watch because I just appreciate everything that he has to say. You know, for someone who's been involved in politics for so long, it feels like he really hasn't lost his way or grown out of touch. I mean, I'm sure that there's things that I disagree with him on or areas that I would emphasize where he doesn't emphasize with regard to certain issues. But either way, I mean, I, I think that he genuinely is a really solid voice of reason, reason who has a lot of good uh, political instincts. And so, yeah, let's let's listen to this interview. There's two clips here. Um, and we're going to listen to this one first. In many ways, you, at least for me, you de created or defined American political satire. How has that changed? I mean, it feels to me like the, the, the stuff you did, mm -hmm. you know, the, the showing the video and then commenting, it's become, it, it's everybody does it. And it's, sure. not, even, it's not even comics. I yes. mean, that's what Tucker Carlson does when he wants to make his points. Sure. He's, he's borrowing from your yes. playbook. Yes. No, it's... It's a real delight knowing <laughs> It's always good to arm the most cynical and worst people in media. But do you look at it and say, now this whole thing is commoditized? You, you, or well, it was, listen, I, it was commoditized. It, you know, I wasn't doing it uh, out of gracious altruism. I mean, we were selling Budweiser. Uh, it's always been commoditized. It was, I think it's, you know, there's a lot of talk of, so, Exposing absurdity or exposing hypocrisy, what's the point? Well, the point is, is that this is a relentless fight. They always talk about, you know, the, uh, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. But it doesn't bend towards justice by gravity. Like, you have to bend it. And there's a bunch of people trying to bend it back. And you use every tool in your arsenal, and none of them will be... Uh, you know, the one thing. There is no panacea. It takes, you know, all those different things doing in Washington over these past few years gave me a great understanding of how things actually get done incrementally and, and sometimes in one fell swoop. But our country is held together by hundreds of really talented legislative aides. Their bosses, many times, are wind-up dolls who really don't know, I mean, half of it, if you go down there, especially the Senate is like an assisted living facility. <laughs> like, <the> <laughs> That's so true. Um, yet what he says about how the, uh, the moral arc bends towards justice, but it doesn't do that by gravity, so the fight is relentless, um, or at least the other side is relentless, I think that that makes so much sense because there's always this question of like, does what we're fighting for matter because it seems like in this country we're always taking you know um a step forward two steps back sometimes it's two steps forward one step back but there's always you know backwards movement after we make progress and that's really demoralizing to a lot of folks particularly younger people just getting involved in politics so you know when we call it the hypocrisy of republican lawmakers who don't even seem to care about how brazenly hypocritical they are does that matter in the grand scheme of things and I say, yes, it might matter a little bit. Perhaps the impact that we're having on the country is infinitesimal, but we're still having an impact nonetheless. And when you take the small, minute impacts that all of us have collectively, it does help to kind of propel us forward, even if it is in a very incremental, a frustratingly incremental manner, right? So, you know, even though these Republicans don't seem to give a shit about how hypocritical they look, I think that normal people do care. Normal people have this visceral response to shameless hypocrisy. Uh, I do, you do, and as accustomed as we all are to instances of hypocrisy on the on the right and even on the left, with you know, um, with people in the Democratic Party, whatever, it still is a huge turnoff. So to the extent that we can show the inconsistencies and hypocrisy uh, in the argument of Republicans who are trying to take us backwards and harm people, I think that we should try to do that. You're all sports at the Senate. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's held together by these legislative aides that are relentlessly trying uh, uh, to do the right thing and by the thousands of grassroots activists that are trying to get access. 
and they're blocked by a moat of lobbyists and moneyed interest that prevent the people in that building from doing the work that best benefits all the people outside of that building. And, and, and that's the process. So but you but have to use every tool you have to permeate that force field. But presumably the people there who are Republicans, who are conservative Republicans, mm -hmm. those aides think they're doing the right thing and they're trying to get across their Sure, like, but they're doing vision. it, they're honest. Look, if you can find honest brokers down there, you can work with them. What I'm saying is that force field around it is made up of not honest brokers. It's moneyed interests, it's lobbyists, it's people who are weaponizing misinformation and disinformation. And all of those form this, it's the most cloistered so you universe. So you found you could deal with very conservative Republicans? Of course. But, but, but because there was some way to find common ground. People of good faith. Now, there were huge disagreements about certain things. I mean, I don't like this framing, but let me just finish the clip. It's just about done. When you found someone of good faith, you could always get something done. Yeah, so I don't like what Fareed Zakaria is saying here because it's not about finding common ground. Like, that's not what moves us towards, you know, a positive direction. Let's recall just last year what Jon Stewart did and how he did it. He got health care for veterans exposed to toxic burn pits. How? By shaming the fuck out of Republicans and being relentless for days, going on every single news outlet he can to expose how disgusting they are, how they abandon these veterans, how they're hypocritical and they don't actually care. Um, that's how he did it. And he didn't do it by like reaching across the aisle and saying, hey, you seem like a reasonable Republican. Maybe we can work together. He did it by shaming them. And there's a lesson in this. This is what Democratic politicians have to do because normal activists, they can't do what Jon Stewart does. Like they don't have the power. Like if you wanted to shame Republicans, well, I mean, it's like fucking farting in the wind. They don't give a shit. But if you are a lawmaker, you actually can, at least to an extent, use your influence and large political platform to shame them. And that's really what we need to do. I think that this whole notion of like, oh, well, when they go low, we go high, that really is just, one, it's stupid because Democrats don't apply that same philosophy to progressives during primaries, but it's just not a way that you achieve progress. Like in this political climate, you can't work with these vicious, feral Republicans who want to rip off your neck or rip off your head and shit down your neck, right? Like, you have to shame them and be relentless, be as relentless as they are. And so I don't like that framing by Fareed Zakaria, and that wasn't even what Jon Stewart was implying, but, like, Fareed Zakaria has this lib instinct to just automatically cower in fear to Republicans, and, like, liberals really need to stop, and they need to resist that urge that they have, even though it's, like, embedded in their DNA. Stop being cucks, liberals, okay? Be aggressive when you're dealing with conservatives. Shame them. Be ruthless. Humiliate them. Because that is literally the only way you're going to get anything done if you're able to get anything accomplished at all. Here's the next clip that I want to watch, though. We are joined by John Stewart himself. But who else would it be? Free. <laughs> it's nice to see it. Um, okay, we're watching these backwards, I guess. This is, the se <laughs> this is the first clip. We watched the second clip first, but, you know, it's okay. I love your... Aquarium. Thank you. Have. Thank you. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> it does look like yes. an aquarium. Um, so I got to ask you, it's a big thing in the news. Donald Trump indictment. There are people. What? Who, no, no. Just uh, stay with me for a minute. There are people I've been who watching say, the live cameras at the courthouse. <laughs> it's imminent. Breathless speculation. So there are people who say, Yes, you have to indict him because he, he has, in fact, broken the laws. And there are other people who say this is going to turn him into a martyr. This is his right. path through redemption. Sure. How, how do you think about it? I mean, OK. I think that I probably know how Jon Stewart is going to answer this question. But there's not like two equal sides to this. Either you believe in the rule of law and equal justice for all, which means we hold elites accountable as we do the peasants, or you don't. And so if you think that we should have an equitable justice system, then there's no question, regardless of the political consequences, regardless of how this affects Trump, either positively or negatively, you have to do it if he broke the law. 
because that's what equal justice requires. So I, I, I hate this line of thinking. And I know that Farid is just playing devil's advocate here, but it drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. Okay. Stop. Stop pretending as if there's some sort of like an equal sides debate. The folks who don't want Trump indicted, they're just sycophants. Okay. You can see edge cases of people saying, well, yeah, well, you know, he's going to become a martyr and this might make him more popular. It doesn't matter. The reason why elites, CEOs, politicians get away with so much is because they they know that there's not going to be any accountability. Change that. Even if we start with Donald Trump, change that. Hold them accountable if they break the law. But let's listen to John Stewart's uh, response. Oh, I, I, the law should always take into account someone's popularity. I think that's <laughs> that's. Oh, I mean, what what's happened to our country? Well said. For it's as though you can't even commit financial fraud anymore. You can't, you can't inflate the value of your properties uh, when you need a loan. And then okay, his response is way better than mine because you shouldn't even seriously entertain this notion that you, you can't indict Trump because of who he is. So I, this is the better approach, okay? Forget everything I said. Just dismiss it by mocking it. it uh, with taxes, I mean, uh, the next thing you know, they're going to send you to jail instead of your lawyer and your accountant and your campaign <laughs> manager and everyone else. Uh, around you. It's no to the idea that someone may face accountability uh, who's that rich and powerful is outrageous. And this country shouldn't stand for it. <laughs> but uh, but but what if it what if it turns out to be his his get out of jail free pass? It's his path to people will see him as a martyr. He gets he. OK, I, okay I don't with that. He, is that I, he could I become don't, president again. He could become president anyway. Fareed, you, it's, we either have the rule of law or we have no rule of law. The rule of law does not take into account if that might make you a martyr to somebody. I'd much rather have the conversation be, what is the law? What exactly are we saying that, that he did? His lawyer went to jail for this same situation for a couple of years. So what is the crime? Is it a crime? The there reason are people who say it's selective prosecution, that this would not. Everything is selective prosecution. The reason why Donald Trump became popular in the first place and the reason why these populist movements is that the citizenry have become fed up with the lack of accountability for those in power. We have no accountability in our financial systems. We have no accountability for the bankers. I mean, our uh, Congress trade stocks with information they get making laws and they do it to great success and they won't stop it because they're the ones in charge of making the law about it and instead of bringing accountability to the rampant corruption that is uh, uh, surrounds our our government and our financial systems the supreme court just changed the definition of corruption rather than prosecuting it, rather than holding people accountable, they just went, how about this? How about, okay, why don't we just say this? It was even better than that, was that they said, you politicians, you think that's corruption because you're engaging it, but we actually don't think it's corruption. And, and we're we're going to tell you, don't worry about it. You can influence yeah, Pedal yeah. as long as you don't explicitly say, this by the way, this money is so that I may influence this law yeah. specifically. And you have to lay out like that is what has the, the lack of confidence that people have in the system is and you even see it throughout the media, even that conversation. Should we? Should we not? It's a oh, but he's popular and then it might make him more popular, but not less popular. Did he do something wrong? What was it? Explain that to us. What is the law that he supposedly violated? What are the ramifications of it? Uh, I, I don't see him ever actually going to jail. I personally don't even care. I just want a system that somehow finds a consistent accountability. So in many ways, you, at least for me, you created or defined American political satire. How has that changed? I mean, it feels to me like the, the, the stuff you did, mm -hmm. you know, the the showing the video and then commenting. It's become, it's everybody does it. And it's, sure. not, even, it's not even comics. I yes. mean, that's what Tucker Carlson does when he wants to make his points. Sure. He's, he's borrowing from your yes. playbook. Yes, no, it's, 
it's a real delight knowing. <laughs> okay, I guess that they are going to go into the uh, video that we just watched. But, you know, either way, I think that Jon Stewart's point is absolutely spot on here. All of these questions, like <laughs> these questions we ask about, well, what if it emboldens Donald Trump? What if he becomes a martyr? Like, none of these questions are germane. They're completely irrelevant as to whether or not he should be indicted. That The answer to that question is very easy. Did he break the law? If he did, then yes, you indict him. We don't have to sit here and, like, pretend as if, um, you know, Donald Trump isn't already going to be popular regardless of what happens. Like, he's going to spin this and weaponize it. It just, like, none of this shit matters. You know, if if a poor person did what Trump did, they would already be in jail. They'd be in prison. But, like, because it's Donald Trump, we give him a pass? No. Like, I don't believe that we should have this two-tier justice system where peasants go to prison and elites can do whatever the fuck they want. Like, it's insane. Like, we ha- we already have a system, as John Stewart was pointing out, of legalized bribery in this country. And so if you still can't even follow the lax laws that we have, then you've really gone too far in one direction. So, I mean, yeah, you should, you should, like anyone, be held accountable. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.